Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. I'm an immigration attorney. We have offices in St. Louis, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. This is episode number 321 of the Immigration Answer Show. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all had a good weekend. I'm going to be here for a full hour, and I'm going to answer as many immigration questions as I can. Let's try to keep it tight. Let's try not to have big, long narratives. Just give an overall summary of your situation. Let me know if you have an issue that I can give guidance on. Remember, this is not legal advice. This is just my thoughts based on a call. It's not a substitute for hiring a lawyer. We are happy to help, happy to offer whatever information that we can. I do believe that most people need an immigration lawyer as they go through the immigration process. I do believe that too many people do it on their own. But I also believe that we can try to help people and guide people, teach them what to look for, and teach them the right path when it comes to immigration. Immigration is a complicated area of federal law. The Immigration and Nationality Act is that thick. The regulations are almost as thick. There are so many things that you don't know that you think you know that if you knew, you would do things a little bit differently. So I will get off my soapbox and I will start asking questions and I'm going to start the show with Lana. Hello. Hi. I'm here with my boyfriend, Max. Hi, Max. He's, Hi. Or, go ahead. So um, we are living in the Washington right now uh, and we are going to marriage. Uh, so um, I have my, I'm asylum seeker and um, uh, we are thinking about um, adjustment of my status uh, through the marriage. Uh, so uh, what we can to do in this case, can we uh, pause my asylum case and go through the marriage uh, and um, When did yes. you file? When did you file your asylum case? Uh, when I, mm, I think it was like the middle of the last summer. Yes. Yeah, so, ha have you had an interview on your asylum case? Mm, no, I hasn't. I have a court. It's in May. Yeah. So you're you're in immigration court. Yes, I'm in the immigration wait. court. Wait, how did you enter the United States? How? Yeah, how? Uh, I am asylum seeker, so I uh, asked for asylum for asylum at the border. border. Yes. So. Okay, so you haven't, you don't have a lawful, you don't have a lawful admission into the United States. Uh, I have a status here. I mean, I'm oh, not sure. You no, you don't have status here. No, you don't. You have asylum seeking. I yes. Other... Yes, and I a have. Uh, Is it a refugee? It's humanitarian parole. I humanitarian parole okay what country are you from i'm from russia originally okay all right so so what's the question for me so i was wondering like um how do we get in contact with the courts to potentially pause the asylum case do we have to have an immigration lawyer and if so does it have to be somebody in washington like a lawyer from washington and like how much would it probably cost us so um, do you have a court date that's coming up? Uh, yes. When is the court date? It will be at the May of this year. So in like three or four months. Is that your first yeah. court date? Yeah. Yes, it's my first court. Okay, so what needs to happen is, and are you already married or you're going to get married? No, not yet, but we want to get married. We've dated since July. Um figured he would just get citizenship through asylum, but now it's seeming maybe, you know, and we want to get married anyways. So I thought, well, two birds with one stone, but then I don't know if it's good to get married in Washington with his court coming up in a couple months. Cause what if they look at that as a red flag? Well, the court coming up in a couple months, that's not a big deal. I mean, he okay. can get, he can get an extension. So really? he, mm -hmm. he should go to court on the day of the court and say, I want to hire a lawyer. I need some more time. In the meantime, if you got married and filed an I-130 petition, you could tell the judge that too. That would make the judge happier because then the judge, she would know that you have a path to stay here that might not involve her. So, oh. but in, over, in overall answer to your question, 
this is a pretty complicated case. There's a lot of moving parts. You're going to need a lawyer's help to. Um, Should I go to court with him? Is that allowed? Um, to talk to I, don't, I don't know if you want to do that yet. Um, what I would do is I would hire a lawyer to help you with that stage of it help you get the green card case on the I-130 on file. There's a, there's a lot of steps that have to happen in order for him to be able to stay here. The one thing you have to understand is they're going to think that he only got married to get out of deportation. So you, you have a higher hurdle than a regular marriage case because he's in removal proceedings. And when you get married in removal proceedings, you have to show by what's called clear and convincing evidence that it's a real marriage. Most people just have to show 51% that it's a real marriage. You're going to have to show higher because they think you're only getting married to Lana to get a green card. So, so you're going to have to convince them otherwise. How would we go about convincing them otherwise just by showing up to that first asylum court? No, that's not where this will happen. This is a totally separate application that will get filed with USCIS, a different part of immigration. Hmm. You have to convince USCIS that it's a real marriage. So, um, any other questions that we had? I think it was mostly kind of also a ballpark as to how much it would cost to get the immigration there because we pretty well figured we need one now. <laughs> First, I, we think, thought we didn't. I think you should plan on spending somewhere between seventy five hundred and ten thousand on everything. So okay. you know, a normal, a normal if if he had entered the United States on a visit visa and overstayed and wasn't in deportation and you guys got married, our legal fee would be fifty five hundred. So there's a lot of other parts to it where we have to go to court. We have to we have to pause those proceedings so that you can do the marriage stuff. And then once the marriage is approved, then we have to go back to the immigration court, get them to stop the deportation so that we can then so that we can then get a, the green card through marriage. Um, could we use you or somebody out of state as sure. a lawyer? Yeah. Immigration is federal. Are you talking Washington, D.C. or Washington state? Washington State. Washington State. Yeah, we handle cases and all. It's, immigration's federal, so it's it's all over. And then, um, is it a one-time fee or a monthly? Oh no, fee? this is over years. We'd break it all up. Oh, okay, so how much would I probably or we works, but how much would we pay a month? Um, we'd probably need a, like three or four thousand to get started, and then we break it up after that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, for looking at reviews and stuff, I'm seeing your website. Is there any other place we should look when looking for lawyers um, in case we don't choose you? Uh, where do we get started like to look for the different lawyers that are available yeah. and making sure they're all legitimate? And I would I would I think your best bet is to check out this thing called the American Immigration Lawyers Association. Okay. And then the main thing I would be looking for is whether immigration is all that they do. I'd stay away from people who do like car accidents and wills and immigration okay so only immigration lawyers yeah thank you so much if good luck guys thanks for coming on the show next time see what'd you say if we have more questions can we call in next time well usually i don't answer questions over and over if people either hire us or they don't so oh i see what you're saying okay well thank you so much for that advice it. have a good day you, you too. too all right next up mariana hi mariana Hi, Jim. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. I have a quick question. Um, I am the petitioner for my husband and my little son. He is going to be four years and my husband is 38. We petitioned. We started the I-130 on December 2022 and we filed uh, the adjustment of status for both on January. Uh, last Saturday, my husband received his employment authorization card. Wow, that's so, great. Yeah, it was very quick. We we're very happy and excited because uh, this is a huge thing for us now that yeah, for sure. Working. Yeah. So, um, uh, since we are new in the United States, and I know that it's tax season, I need to know what would be your best advice for me to file taxes since we, uh, I mean, he doesn't have a social security number yet. We are expecting it to come through the mail or maybe go to the social security office um, in, like this week, or the, I don't know. And he doesn't have an ITIN number either. So should we file jointly? Uh, how does this work? So um, you're not talking about the affidavit of support. You're just talking about documenting the marriage with, in the way you pay your taxes. Is that right? Yes, because I know that as soon as we get the interview, because I don't know when is this, this is going to mm -hmm. happen, 
uh, filing taxes together may be a new, might be a new good evidence for us to bona fide marriage, right? I gotcha. So I would say that given the timing of everything that you have, that, um, that they would let it go either way. That it's, I mean, it, it would be nice evidence to have, but if, if he had no earnings last year, and if you, when did you get married? When did you get married? Oh, sorry. It's okay. Uh-oh. Is it me? No. Okay. That's weird. Well, hopefully, oh, hold on. Here she comes. Here she comes. Okay. When did you guys get married? Oh, we got married on uh, September 2017. Okay. And so... And he's been in the United States the whole time, or he came up last year, or what? No, we we were living outside the U.S., and we arrived on July 2022 together. He came with a visa and uh, a B1, B2 visa. So he wasn't earning anything. So you And were you working last year? Did you work last year? Yes. Yes. I yeah. So I would, I, here's what I would do. I, I don't think, I think you're, you have a long, nice, long history together. Um, I think that you um, probably have lots of good evidence besides this. I would just talk to my CPA, say what makes the most sense. I'd like to file jointly, but you're right on that cusp where he just got the work card. I don't think anyone's going to hold it against you if you don't. It's just one piece of evidence. Okay. I mean, if you really want to bend over backwards and wait and get an extension on your taxes and file them in October until he gets his tax ID number, that might actually, you might actually get more money back. So I would just, whatever the accountant says, I'd go with that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. You got it. Thanks, Mariana. Bye. 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 Next up, Ali. What do you say, Ali? You're on mute. Hey, Jim. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Good, 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 good. Um, thank you for everything you do. Sure. What's up? I really appreciate it. Um, I found my I-751 last, last year, April. April 22, okay. Yeah. You and, filed it jointly um, with your spouse? Yeah. Okay. And um, after we filed, I found out that I checked my, when I, after I checked my, they sent me a receipt. Yeah. And there was a mistake on the receipt that they didn't spell my, one of my middle name very well. So we, I called them and I, they, we called them and we correct it. Okay. So they said it's corrected. That's why they sent me um, an evidence. They sent me like an email that they've corrected. It okay. has been corrected. And since then, I've never, I've not heard anything from them anymore. Oh, these cases are taking two years, Ali. There's, uh, no, one's, no one's even looking at your case. Wow. Yeah. In fact, they just said they're going to start giving 48 month extension letters because they don't know they can get it done in two effing years. Wow. It's a now joke. I'm... It's a joke agency. It's a totally joke agency. Wow. But, but you don't have anything to worry about. Hopefully they fix it. You're just waiting. So this year, um, and around maybe like next month or this month, I think I'm due. I'm supposed to. Can I file for my citizenship? If everything's cool with your marriage, yeah, I would. He's not gonna delay or no. I'm done with I'm done waiting for those fools to decide 751s before I tell people to file for citizenship. I used to say wait because it makes things complicated, but they're so dumb and so stupid and so slow. Just file that N four hundred, like I said, as long as everything's cool with the marriage and as long as you've lived together the whole three years. Yeah, we live together. And another thing, my where we used to live before, my wife, um, she, um, uh, our license, she didn't change it before I filed because we moved to a new place. Yeah, that's dumb. You should always change your license before you file for an immigration benefit. Because I told her that, oh, this is where you say, oh, they, they have this address on the file. And I said, why can't you just change it? He said, because it doesn't, she, it's not far because she says she wants want to keep the insurance of that area. Because nope, it's cheaper. That's all, that's all stuff that makes you look sneaky at immigration. You know? 
And you so know, but the best time to do it was before she filed. The second best time to do it is tomorrow. Okay. All right. So if you need more information, so I should, I should send the new. Um, can I send the new driver license? I no, nobody cares license. about it. Just just chill. Okay. 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 If you want to, you can. It doesn't matter if you want to upload okay. it. Okay. And, and one more question, please. Can I travel with my receipt? Yes, you can. Okay. Thanks, Ali. The eyes um, and the citizenship. One more question. The citizenship. Can you do it for me? Sure. Happy to. Okay. How much do you charge for it? Four. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Ali. Thank See you, buddy. buddy. All right. Thank you. And that was 4,000 just for anybody that was wondering. All right. Let's say hi to Lucas. Hi, Lucas. Hey, Jim. Thank you for taking my, my call. I've been here before. Yep. So here's the, here's the thing. Uh, I filed my uh, my marriage based uh, application adjustment of status uh, on Dece uh, December 2021. Uh, okay. At the time, uh, the paralegal I did with, uh, he just asked me for the marriage certificate. And a you, mean, you mean the notario, the fake lawyer, not the paralegal. You mean the yeah, fake lawyer uh, called partially, notarios. Partially, I did that mistake at yeah. the time. And just, I, so, just so that everyone's on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I. I I regret since then. So that's but, okay. So what but, happened? And, and anyway, uh, <clears throat> and then she only filed with uh, uh, no no much evidence of the marriage. And I asked her why, and she said, "Once you have your interview day, you you can just bring to the interview day, and that's that will be fine." And I said, "Okay, uh, she she must know what she's doing." Uh, then uh, yesterday I got uh, RFE from my I 485 for the medical exam examinations. So that's good. But I got a, a, a intention to deny on my I 30. Because not enough marital evidence? Yeah, they are asking a bunch of stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm not worried for, for what they are asking for, but I, I got worried for intention to deny. And I got a little worried. Okay, so just so everybody who's watching understands, Lucas is now the second person I've heard from in two weeks that submitted a little bit of marital evidence with that original I-130, didn't get a request for evidence, but got a notice of intent to deny. This is a, I just did a video on it. It's the hottest video on our channel right now. It's like one new trick that USAIS is doing. So everybody needs to understand, gone are the days that you can rely on filing extra evidence at your green card interview you've got to plan it and i think i think this is sort of the flip side of them saying we might not do so many interviews anymore i think they're trying to scare people into filing with more evidence so that they can see up front without an interview in say 60 percent of the cases whether or not they should approve it or not so again if you overwhelm them with lots of stuff you're really going to cut down on the chances that you have an interview but now Lucas is worried about his case getting dismissed. Yes. And sucks. my question, uh, she told me that that is a great, uh, somehow is a great uh, sign that I got this intention to deny requesting for evidence. They, of course. Well, I, great I, yeah. That, everything's that's great. What, uh, yeah. And well, I'm, I'm kind of worried uh, on submitting uh, uh, those evidence we heard i don't know if we'll make any difference uh submit for, with somebody else or with with her or by myself no, i think you should i think i think i think you should have us or somebody else help you file i mean to me it's like starting over if if they if your your case is barely alive so you've got to overwhelm them with evidence okay but we just answered the uh intention to deny a letter with the with the things that they are asking for oh. You did already? No, no. I just got a yes. Yeah, no, 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 no. That and this is why you need a lawyer. We're gonna build a case. We're gonna make okay. a case. Like it you can't just if if they send you notice of intent to deny and they send you six things that they want, you've got to give them twenty-five things. Okay. Uh I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about following their playbook. I'm talking about following our playbook and submitting the evidence that should have been submitted at the beginning. Okay. And okay, uh, do, do you take care from from that step? And I know it's not from the beginning. 
yeah, yeah, we do. Why don't you send me the send me the notice of intention and I and let me know what I would say is send me the notice of intention and I then send me a list of what you think you have and then we'll talk about what 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 else needs to happen. Okay, we have a lot of things. So I, I don't know good. why she didn't submit it uh, at the Cause beginning. She's lazy. Because she's lazy and she doesn't know things. Well, uh, I have uh, two more questions about the affidavits of support. They ask, uh, they are asking for affidavits of support. Uh, sh should I do by myself too? Like uh, we telling our story for immigration pur purpose or our? You mean you're, so affidavits of support? That means something else. You mean affidavits th that the marriage is real? You mean that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would include affidavits from you and your wife. If your case is on life support, you got to tell the whole story. Okay. Okay. How how much it will be uh, average uh, cost for, you know, to take care from? I, I'd want to see everything. I'd want to know. Do you have a copy of everything that got submitted? No. Yeah, that sucks. Probably around 4500 Okay. So I have uh, like... We can, to, we can break it up. Okay, yeah, because I'm I'm kind of afraid, you know, because she's oh it's all good, it's all fine, but it's not her case, it's my case. So, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Can I email to you the uh, you yep. the yeah the the intention to deny and, and we we start from there. Start from there. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you very Thanks, much, Lucas. All right, bye, buddy. Bye, bye. So lots of lessons there from our good friend Lucas. Number one, don't use. People that call themselves paralegals. What they should call themselves are fake lawyers. Number two, you get what you pay for. When you pay a fake lawyer $1,500 to file your case, that's what you get. You get a notice of intent to deny. You get hit in the mouth. And then you get all these nights not being able to sleep because you think you're going to get your case denied and have to start all over. Right? So Lucas seems like a good guy. And I think we can turn that around. But man, that's that's got to be scary. And like I said, the scariest part is that USCIS is now sending notices of intent to deny, not requests for evidence, which means they got the knives out. Knives out. Wacko's next. What's up, Wacko? Hi, Jim. <clears throat> Thank you for your work. You have been very good. Sure, Two what's up? Questions. The first one is, if you have an F1, a kid on F1, and you're going for an interview, a consulate interview, is, that, is there any concern there? If you're, you're talking about, do I, what do I think about an embassy interview? Yes, if you, if you have a kid F1? that is on F1. The kid is on F1 already studying, going to school. So your child is there on an F1, and you have a green card interview at the embassy. Is there anything to be concerned about? Wait, say that again? I don't understand. So there's a kid that filed for their parents. Yeah. And the parents have a kid, not a kid, who is on an F1. Oh yeah, they're going to be on to that. Did the kids? Did the parents already get the green cards? No. Yeah. So, so who whose interviews first? The kids or the parents? The kids are already at. No, the kids don't have green card yet. No, the but the kids have an F one visa interview, right? No, they're they're at school already. Kids at school. Oh, they're already here. Yes. They already got the F ones. Yes. And so, okay, so this is a situation where there's Jim and Jim's little sister and little brother came to America on F1s and then Jim filed for Jim's mom and dad and now mom and dad have their green card interview. Yes, that sounds like it. Okay, and, and the question is, am I worried that the embassy is going to screw around with mom and dad's green card because now basically the whole family's in the U.S.? Something like that. Are the kids going to school and doing everything they can? They're working towards a degree or are they just hanging out? No, no, school. Yeah. Real school. So it's legit F1s and everything. Legit everything. Okay. So um, uh, I think I think the parents should be prepared to talk about it, but really there's not much they can do. If it was the other way around, if the parents had the green card and now the kids were going for the F1s, I think that's the bigger problem. Now, if the kids leave the United States and have to get stamps, that's also a problem. So I think you need to, they need to be careful moving forward. But if they're already in the United States, I don't think there's much that the embassy people can do about the parents wanting to come. What embassy is it? Uh, I think Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's, no one's going to get worked up over this, I don't think. Okay. It's a good what, question. What about if, they, if you have a green card at embassy and a 
waiting on an interview and you decide to do adjustment instead for whatever reason. Is that... Oh, that's one of my favorite tricks because the embassies get so backlogged. Yeah, if the person's here in the United States, as long as they didn't solely intend when they enter to adjust status and they decide while they're here, I think that's a great solution to the backlogs of the embassies. Okay. And 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 the kid would this the problem the F ones wouldn't be a problem either way. Well, I'm just worried about what happens when the kids stop going to school and stuff like that, or they leave to go get a stamp or something. That's what I'm worried about. Okay, so that's the kind. Con- okay, um, yeah, that's unknown, I suppose. Right. Uh, thank you for your time. You, you, you're great. I listen to you. It's, it's. I like your patience. And anyway, I don't want to take up much time, but thank you a lot. All right, Wacko. See you, buddy. Thanks great, for watching, and thanks for the kind word. Guy. You're a great person. Thanks, buddy. We'll see you. Okay. Good luck with everything. All right, thank you. All right, all right. Let's say hi to Sakar. There she is. Oh, I can't hear you. No, Can you hear me mute. now? Now I hear you. How you doing? I'm good. Do you remember me? I do. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Are you overseas? No, no, I'm here. I'm in St. Louis. Oh, because there's like a delay. What's up? Um, let me see. I wanted to ask, um, so I have two questions. My first one is my friends, um, they applied for their citizenship in 2020 and it's gone nowhere. It just says processing and they've sent, um, multiple like emails to them and it just says, uh, processing. Is that normal? Two years, two and a half years. Yes. No, that's not normal. What country are they from? Uh, from Iraq. Yeah, so they can't do background checks. They, they might want to file a lawsuit. Two and a half years is crazy. And do you, do you know how? Yeah, yeah. People who we know that have applied recently have uh, heard back, but there's there's three families that I know of that applied in 2020 and have not heard anything. They probably feel like they can't do background checks on them or something. I don't know. Or maybe they were in the military or you know, there's lots of different reasons, but they, they definitely slow walk some cases. Oh, are you able to give us some pricing so that they could hire you? Mm -hmm. So a lawsuit costs $4,600 and the filing fee is 402. So it's $5,002. And is that for the family or separate per wife and per husband? We, for the family, we would just charge an extra 500 for anybody. Like in one family, if it's a husband and a wife, it'd be 46, so 4,600 plus the 402, then 500 for the spouse. Okay. Okay. Well, I think, I think they would like to move on. I'll tell them to reach out to you. Yeah, and then uh, just, my second yeah. question is, yeah, cause, yeah, cause I had nothing but good things to say about you. Yeah. So they wanted me to that. hop on and see how much of them. Sure. And uh, my brother applied for his wife for a spousal visa in 2020. Um, Last year, we had her. We received a letter saying that it's at the National Visa Center. Um, you should hear back, but we haven't heard anything back. Do they need to do anything? No. Just they're wait. Been, they're documentally qualified. Yes. Yeah. Then you're just waiting. Oh shoot. Okay. All right. Well, I think that that would be all. Thank you. I appreciate your. Thanks. Help. Good seeing you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. All right. All right, all right. Uh, let's talk to. Hey, Mon- Jim. Montaga. Yeah. Hey, Tim. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing, Montaga? Uh, I'm fine. Thank. Thank you for being here. I have been trying to reach, uh, reach out to you. I don't know. Oh, how I'm many glad times. we're. Thank well, you, glad thank we're you for everything you're doing. I have been watching your videos on YouTube like a lot. Yeah, I have one single question. I, I apply for an adjustment of status. I am a F1 student. I have been here. Like, I came to America in December 2020. So I started, I came as a transfer student. I completed my, my bachelor degree. Right now, I'm doing my master's. So I applied for a, a adjustment of status on June 9, 2022. Based on marriage or something else? Yeah, based on marriage. Married a U.S. citizen? Yeah, I'm, I got married in on, on January 2022. 
Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. So um, since I applied on on June 9, 2022, I like two weeks later, I got a notification for fingerprint. And after that, since then, it was like in November that I received a letter. They say they have finished scanning my document for the initial scanning that and they had everything except for my medical my medical uh, information that I should know that I will have to provide it either. Um, they will say, send me a request for evidence or they're going to send me, um, or I will have to bring it during the interview. But that's all I got. Every time I check, they say my case is actively, they're actively reviewing. So I... What, where will you have, if you have a green card interview, what city will you have your green card interview in? I am right now in Atlanta, but um, I was Atlanta. planning to move to New York. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Atlanta is a really busy place. So you're talking year and a half. So you got some time to wait, I think. Okay. So, um, and I am going to graduate like end of uh, this year. I was planning to apply for OPD because I was, I did a concurrent filing, but I was expecting to get a work authorization by now because on on the, the USCIS website, website, they said on the, at the National Benefit Center is 8.5 months, but it's going to be nine months since I filed. I didn't receive any TA. Yeah, I would file for OPT and for the EAD off OPT. Yep. Okay, so is there anything that you can advise for my case? I, I am still on status. I, I don't have any problem with immigration, but you're good. You're just chilling. taking too much time. I'm kind of worried. Don't be worried. It's not about you at all. It's just about how backlogged they are. Okay. And um, concerned because somebody was mentioning uh, like having your, your ID with your address. Um, when we filed the application, my wife, because she lived, she used to live in New York, she had a New York ID. So we, as soon as we got married, because I had finished my bachelor degree, she was like, maybe we should file for you to start working so that we can be able to help each other. So we mm -hmm. filed at that time. We had a lot of evidence like family writing letters and everything, but her ID was a New York ID and I was almost going to college here in Georgia. So we filed with her New York ID and we didn't change that though. So is she living with you in Georgia? Yeah, we live together. And like she, she travels sometimes with work, but we live together. Sometimes she go for a week, but we still live in Georgia together. But we she didn't change the ID because I didn't know that was really important. We'll go do it tomorrow. Okay. So when I when she changed it, should I like upload it? Because since we apply, I sometimes every time we we have we we had information, new information, I added to the website. Like she added me to her LinkedIn to, to her. I mean, to her insurance because she's working. She added me to her insurance, so I uploaded I uploaded well, those information. All that is good, but the driver's license even better, so I would do that. Okay. So she don't know how to drive those. She have an ID. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. So as far as my case is concerned, so I shouldn't do anything. I'm not worried about your case. Okay. So you shouldn't worry about your case. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I I I guess, think, Thanks for watching, bud. Yeah, if I need anything, I'll reach out to you, okay? See ya. Okay. Yeah, bye. All right, Matthew's here. What do you say, Matthew? Hey, nice to see you. Um, me and my fiancé are in the process you, of doing... Can you hold your mic up? I can barely hear you. Oh, sorry about that. Me and my fiancé are in the process of doing the K-1 visa. Okay. On November 1st, they approved it. On November 7th, the MVC sent it back for review. Is there anything we could do to get it moving forward because right now it's been 20 days since immigration service has had it and right now it's, i'm just assuming just sitting probably in a box somewhere but so this is interesting this is the second time in a week that i've heard the state department sending an approved k-1 back to uscis any idea why they didn't send us anything because we i did the inquiries and they sent a few message from the MVC, it sounded like, well, the last two message, it says, we'll notify you once the case is forward and assigned to U.S., but there is no case number. Then the last one, we returned the immigration visa to the immigration service. So they're not really telling us anything that is wrong with it. Are you the U.S. citizen or the foreign national? I am the U.S. citizen. No idea what it is? 
they're not telling us anything. And I'm not asking if they're, I'm asking if you have an idea. No, we both have clean background, never married, no children. So it should be very simple. Just fill out the I mean, To me, to me, the biggest thing is that I've now heard it twice in two weeks. So in 10 days. So I don't think it's you. I think it's something else. I think they might be up to something. Would you mind coming back when you get it and let me know? I don't know how to speed it up. When did you file? When did you file the I-129F? We started it in July 21st, 2021. So about a year and seven months. Jeez, oh, God damn it. And now they then send it back. We joined a community. And a lot of them are in process of transit. So it's a bit frustrating for us to see us go backwards go back. and forward. Yeah. I mean, I might sue them on that one. because If, if, if it drags out 60 days, I'd sue them. And I'd sue the State Department and USCIS just so that you got to get that case out of USCIS. That's ridiculous. A year and seven months is ridiculous, but a year and seven months plus we send it, plus it comes back. F that. Yeah, because I we kind of don't want it. We're just they're just passing it back and forth. That's right. Without that's, giving us and that's why you got to sue both of them. I might I'd give them sixty days and then I'd sue them. Okay. All right. Sorry, Matthew. That sucks. Okay. Yeah, the, We're hearing lots of weird things out of USCIS. You know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. Does everyone want to know what it is? Here's what it is. They all know that they're behind. They all know they're lazy. They all know they're not doing their job. And they're passing the hot potato of Matthew's fiance's case back and forth because they're too damn lazy to do their job. And they don't work together. They view each other as part of the problem. And, oh, we're going to send it to those guys over there. I guarantee you that it's some BS reason that they've sent two cases now that we know about in the last, because if, if it's two that hacking knows about in the last 10 days, that means that this is, this shit's going on all over the, t- all over the place. I'm sorry. Okay. So be just wait and sue both of them. I'd give them 60 days and then I'd sue them. Okay. All right. Thank you, you buddy. for your time. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great trick. Oh, yeah, we approved it and we sent it on. Oh, wait a minute. It's coming back. Sorry. It's like that that meme of that little chubby kid running into the room and coming in and then turning around and going back. That sucks. Let's see what Omar has to say. Hi, Omar. Hey, Jim. How you doing? I'm great. Hey, uh, during last week, uh, you answered one of my questions. Uh, during, I, posted com- I mean, I posted a question during the comment. I said, hey, Jim, I guess got my green card approved, but my I-31 is still pending. And I believe your answer was, you know, it shouldn't matter, but I'm an asylum, like, you know, so I need I want to to travel outside the country. Oh, so you mean a re- you mean a re- you mean a refugee travel document? Oh, yes, sir. That's what I meant. I'm sorry, so, I wasn't clear. During the that's okay. So, so, um, so my question is, if the other one still pending, like, if you think it's gonna get denied, should I go ahead and apply for another one? Because I well, so not- so did you? Did you file for the 45 and the reentry permit at the same time? Yes, sir. And I had got the I had got the one I one thirty one, then they got expired. Then I renew it. Then the, I still haven't got to renew it yet. But but was the green card application in a like a separate Yeah, yeah, time, it was all separate... together. It was all together. See, I wonder if they made the same mistake I did where they thought that's a it's a it's a advanced parole as part of the green card. Not sure, but I know at first they sent me I one thirty one before, and they expired because on the one yeah. year. Yeah. Then I sent my renewal. So, so when, you, like, when you when um, you and you're not going to the country that you got asylum from. Oh right? no 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 absolutely not yeah I'm never going yeah. back out there so. <laughs> so. So when you look up the one thirty one now, what does it say online? Oh, it just said my fingerprint. Oh, my fingerprint, you know, attached to. And so, how long ago did you file? On um, the renewal, I did the renewal back in September. Oh, yeah. You're probably just waiting. Okay. Because I was saying, like, if, if they are going to deny that, should I go ahead and apply for another but one? May- maybe. Are you, are you, are, do the do the 45 and the 131 for uh, a travel document, do they go to the same address? Yes, sir. Hmm. I would have filed those separately. Like, I would have waited a week in between. Yes, sir. Maybe, maybe there's a chance they confuse it. I, I, mm, September. Mm. Because I might wait, uh, I might wait a couple I months. Did. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, sir. And call. I did you call him and ask him? No, sir. I have not So I'll I would do that too. What I should do before I filed another one. I would. I would do that. 
Okay. Although then again, is there a filing fee for a reentry for a travel document? I don't think there is. Oh, uh, I mean, when I did the renew, it wasn't. But after my green card got approved, or uh, if I want to file another one, it would be five hundred sixty-five dollars. Yeah. Believe. So that's up to yeah. you. I, I, I mean, I, I think your case is probably still alive. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. All right, then. Well, thank you very much, Jim. I really Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks, Omar. See you, bud. All right. Take care, man. You got it. Oh, Talesan, you're not driving, are you? No, no, I'm not. How you doing? Good. How you doing, Jim? Great. What's up? I have a few questions about how can I adjust uh, my status. Uh, I got approved of my one I one thirty uh, petition. I just want to know, like, is there any way or I have option to adjust my status without leaving this? Everything broke up. I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you said. So can you start over? Yeah, I got approved my I-130 in 2019. Yeah. But they denied uh, my... Uh, I status because I came illegally. Yeah. Uh, right. That was going to happen. Was that a surprise to you? Hello? Was that a surprise to you that you can't enter with an inspection and adjust your status? That was that had to be denied. Yes. Yeah. So what's the question? Yeah. What options I have? Uh, if I want to adjust my status without leaving the U.S. You have to leave the U.S. or else you have to. That's the only way you can. If you enter without inspection and you've been approved I-130, you're going to have to start the visa process and then then um, apply for a waiver. Is that all? You, do you have any other problems for admissibility other than the unlawful entry? No. So you need to get you need to get the, the case sent to the National Visa Center and then you need to pay the fees, and then you need to apply for a 601A waiver. Okay. Then I have to leave and come back. That's right. Do I have to leave like, uh, to my country, or like, or I can go like Mexico or Canada? Usually people go to their own country. But I'm Eritrean, and I cannot go back because uh, I don't have any passport. Yeah. What option? Yeah. So, did you? So, can you get a refugee travel document or no? Uh, from oh, yes. Not, or... No, you're not. You're not a refugee. Yeah, yeah. You're not a refugee. Um, you can't get a passport. No, I can't. Because I asked asylum here, and they denied my asylum. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, well, then you're in a little bit of a pickle. You you could try to get another embassy to take you, but they're very reluctant to do it. So you'd probably have to find someplace other than Eritrea. I don't know if Canada and Mexico are going to do it. So is there any, I, you don't have a travel document. So I, I think you're, I, I think unless you get some kind of permission to leave the United States, you're not going to be able to do what you want to do. So what, happened to your, any, like, what, what happened to your asylum case? Did it go to court too? Did you get denied at court? Yeah, they denied on the court. Yeah. So you have a deportation order? Yeah. Uh, torture with convention. Oh, so you have cat protection, but that's it. Yeah. That sucks. Um, well, Okay, so this is really complicated. I would need to look at everything, but probably what needs to happen is you need to go back to the immigration court, try to get the removal order set aside based on the approved I-130, and then and then you're going to have to figure out some way. You can't leave the United States, so you, right now you can't do what you want to do. Uh -huh. if, you, if you can't get permission, if you can't get a travel document to leave the United States, then I this this... This is something that's probably more complicated than a phone call on this TV show that we could handle. We'd have to dig into everything, but I think it's a pretty complicated uh -huh. situation. Okay. So I have to contact you on your email? Yeah, you can email us. Sure. 
Okay, uh, perfect. Then, uh, yeah, I'll email to you. I'll contact you through email. Thanks, Talasan. See you, buddy. Thank you, Jimmy. All right, all right. There's our email, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Hey, if you guys haven't already, if you got two minutes and want to leave us a five-star review on Google, we'd really appreciate it. Reviewhackinglaw.com. Obviously, we do this show three or four days a week for free. So if you want to pay us back and say thanks, um, leaving us a quick five-star review would be really helpful. Syed wants to know if he can swing by the office and see me. No, 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 no. We don't do that anymore. Everything's online. So we don't take walk-ins. We don't talk to people in the office. Um, we're happy to do consults if it's the kind of case that we can help with and you want to hire us to represent you, that's fine. So just uh, email us or call us, but we don't do in-person. That's one of the few things that came out of COVID that is something we're not going to change back to. All right. Thank you for that, Sayed. Let's say hi to Richard. What's up, Richard? I can't hear you. I think you're on mute, Richard. We will come back to Richard. Let's say hi to Fasting. What's up, Fasting? Hello, Joe. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. How are you doing, Joe? I'm great. How are you doing? Good. Um, I had a couple, uh, two quick questions about my N600. Um, I'm asking on behalf of a friend. But I'm going to narrate the story in the first person because it's much easier for me. Okay. Um, and, Can you and talk a little louder? Uh, sure. How about now? Good. Okay. So um, I submitted my N600 uh, and I'm in high school. I'm senior year high school and uh, submitted my N600 on December 5th. Uh, got a reception notice on December 20. Uh, the biometrics um, appointment was waived on January 20th uh, this year, January 20th, 2023. And my concern is that uh, the interview of the N600 will be on the same date uh, as my regent's exams. Uh, Why do you I think call... this, does, it, does he have an interview notice? Not yet, no. So he's worrying about something. He's worrying that in the in the in the very 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 small chance that his N six hundred ceremony is the same day as his Regents exam. That's the question. My question is like, can I call them to reschedule, or do they not accept this type of of excuse? They would accept the, the that kind of excuse. But why is somebody worrying about this? This is this is. I can't believe someone's worrying about this. That. I mean, the chances of this happening are very remote. And why okay. why walk through life why walk through life worrying about stuff that most likely is never going to happen? Well, um, I also since since my N six hundred is not approved yet, um, even though it, it it should be approved, everything is correct. Like every, every papers are correct. Um, uh, there is like a chance that uh, I might want to travel outside of the U.S. for a couple of uh, two for two weeks or something. And uh, uh, and anyway, so second first question. Thank you for answering. Second question is um, about uh, a green uh, green card lottery. Uh, two two of my friends uh, when they applied for the green card lottery, uh, they put the birthday of the baby uh, four days after it was born. Not not the it was born the baby was born on um, january 20th they put january 24th uh the same year um is that gonna if they do win uh is that gonna create a, a big problem at the interview in the consulate or can, can something that can be fixed why did they do that um it was a mistake like uh, there was no reason behind it it was just simply a mistake yeah i don't think that's a big deal Okay, thank you very much. That was easy. Thanks, fasting. All right, all right. Let's say hi to Marwan. Hi, Marwan. Hello, Mr. Jim. How are you? Good, buddy. What's up? Uh, what's up? So uh, I'm a U.S. citizen applying for my spouse. Uh, uh, so she had her interview on November 22nd last Where? year. Where? 
an Ankara, Ankara, Turkey. Okay. So, she, like everything was fine, all the paper was good, but they they said, "Oh, everything is good." Then after we returned home, they they didn't take the passport, of course. Then they sent the DS fifty five thirty five the for the administrative process. Then we sent it uh, like two months and a half already since we sent it to them. And then we still waiting, nothing. When did uh, you my question is, what is the best time on how long do I need to wait until I sue the embassy? So for when how did, long do I need to wait for it? When did USCIS approve the I-130? Um, September last year. So the three months part, later, I got document. I got document to qualify. And then she had the interview when? On November twenty second. So two months and a half already, or approximately. So USCIS approved it in September of twenty two or September of twenty one. September, but uh, once one second. Twenty-fourth of September. Of what year? Twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two? So the State Department's only had the case in September of 22, and she already had her interview. That that doesn't sound right to me, but maybe maybe it's true. So USCIS, let me clarify. So USCIS took 30 months to approve my petition because I was missing some documents. They sent me an RFA. Yeah. Then I sent it to them. Then approve it to 30 months. Then it took me like three months to get documents to qualify. I paid a fee everything. Then after like nine months, they send me the appointment for the interview. Okay, so State Department yes. has had State Department has had the case for like fifteen months, and there's been an interview. Exactly, and now Qatar, Turkey, yeah. Until I get the interview. If you're sure that the State Department has had the case for fifteen or eighteen months, if she's had her interview, then you can sue now. Okay, so. So I took, uh, so I got documentary qualified on Yem uh, Tasarat Complete. So August 22nd, 2022. Then they sent me after nine months or nine months or 10 months, I got the, the, the interview letter from the embassy. Then I went right away Norman, to Turkey. Norman, do me a favor. I, do me a favor. Yes. Email me the I-130 approval notice. Okay. And email me whatever you got from the State Department. Just that. Just email me that. And then I'll, I just need to look at the dates, and then I'll tell you if it's early, too early to sue or not, okay? Okay, to the email, right? The email, yep. Just say, my name is Marwan. I was on the show today at the 50-minute 50, 50 mark, and we'll go from there. Thank you for your time, Mr. Jim. You got it, bud. We'll see you later. Have a great day. Yep. All right, our old friend Henry's here. Hi, Henry. Hey, Jim. How you doing? You got good news for me? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, with regards to Dubai, you mean? Oh, I thought you were, I, there was a Henry, uh, there was a Henry that posted that he had good news for me the other day. I thought it might be you. Oh, no. Um, actually, I would, I wanted to quickly chat with you because, um, so my wife and I submitted uh, the green card application and our priority date is August 8th. So it's coming up to seven months now, and I haven't received um, the employment authorization yet. Um, so last month, I received a deficiency notice because I didn't submit my medical exam. Mm -hmm. And today, my attorneys received a, a courtesy notice instead of an RFE saying, Hey, can you submit your medical exam? Is that something you're seeing? Is this yeah. is this rare? No. No, that's good news. We're seeing that. Yep, yep. That usually means you're not going to have an interview. Okay. What what makes you say that? Because otherwise they would say. Otherwise, the courtesy letter would say, "Go get your medical and get ready for your interview." 
Got it. Okay, so that's good news. Courtesy letters. Mm -hmm. So you think then everything is moving along instead of going through phases? Because it's strange that they haven't uh, sent me the. I think you're going to get. I think you're going to get your green card and never get your work card. Mm, okay. Oh, that that would be that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's that's all I got. The only other comment I had is just because you helped me so much during these years. If down the line I put together I I want to apply for citizenship, I would love to hire you. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Thanks, Henry. Uh but yeah. Um, let me know, let me know about your green card, okay? Okay, sounds great. See you, buddy. All right, bye. That's our old friend Henry. He's been on here many times. Henry's been here. He's an OG, I would say. Henry is an OG. Uh, other than Fatuma, Henry's in the top 10 of people who've come on the show the most, I think. And then there's Melvin. Who else? Fatuma. Housie. Although Housie usually just talks shit in the comments. I, 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 we should make a list. We should, we, should, we should keep track of that. But Henry's a good guy. I'm always, I'm always rooting for Henry. Uh, I think Richard might be back. Richard, you got your audio working? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, good. All right, thanks. So um, so my question, um, my I brought my wife here on a K-1 visa. It's been almost a year and a half now. She's got her conditional green card. Great. Um, soon after we got married, she started acting pretty erratic. Oh. Um, so um, I've tried for months to get her to go to counseling and therapy. She just doesn't want to do anything. And she's asking for divorce. Um, I've got a pretty good indication that she might try to use Violence Against Women Act um, to get her permanent green card. So my question is, um, what can I do to protect myself against that? Because I'm sure the divorce will happen, unfortunately. And um, what kind of setbacks may I have financially? What's my responsibility? Well, so there are lawyers out there, not a lot of them, but there's this one lawyer I know of for sure that tries to use the affidavit of support in support of a claim um, I don't know if she's found that lawyer or not. They're pretty hard to find, so hopefully not. But well, um, um, I can. The reason I the reason I'm fairly sure she might try it is because she actually posted on her social media a video of one um, immigration attorney who is basically saying that if you know if this has happened to you, then you can get your green card. Hmm. Um, that's really how I know she's thinking. Well, she has her green card. I think. I think Richard. I think that. For all intents and purposes, she's probably going to keep her green card and get her citizenship eventually. I don't think there's much that you can or should do in response to that. I think really you have to think about letting that go because I don't think there's much you can do about it. Yeah, I think my biggest concern is I just don't I just don't want to have any problems if if I've read a lot of bad stories about um, these VAWA cases not even being vetted um, and you know to the detriment of the, of the sponsor. So, but she doesn't even need it to, she doesn't even need VAWA to, I mean, if she can prove that it was a real marriage that just didn't work out, that's, that's a much easier standard than VAWA. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm getting a lot of different information on that. Um, okay. And then, so, right. So I've signed an affidavit of support, right. I'm responsible for her. So um, I don't think there's alimony in Indiana, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with that. That you got to talk to a family lawyer about that business. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Sorry, man. Yeah. Thanks for your help. You got it. Hang in there. Yep. Yeah. All right. I think we have time for one more. Let's say hi to Shabazz. What's up, Shabazz? Uh, hi, sir. How are you doing, sir? We always like to get the guys laying down with oh, their arms over their heads. So I had to, I had to end the show with you. Thank What's you. What's going on? Uh, sir, I'm, I'm well, sir. Thank you for joining my call. Sir, I have a one question. My I-30, I filed in large, last year in... Uh, uh, March 18 March 2022 so I request to my Congress lady she already wrote the letter to Vermont Center and it's showing in Vermont uh, from last seven months from 21 July cases being act have been actively reviewed in UCIS at the moment nothing is outstanding we will let you know if we need anything from you wait so what kind of case is this it's a uh, i30 marriage based green card case Okay, and you filed it when? Last summer? Last uh, March 18th, 2022, and I was having the asylum denied. My asylum case in the court. Okay, so, okay. So, you when did you come to the United States, Shabazz? I came in the U.S. Uh, 11, Dece December 11, 2018 on Me 1, B 2. And then you when did you apply for asylum? I uh, apply asylum 
like uh, when i came i yes i apply asylum in a year Under like a after year? less uh, than a year yeah less than a year. after 6 or 7 months okay and then um and then did you have an interview at the asylum office yes i was having the asylum interview and it's got denied and they yeah, refer my been... case to the court yeah okay and what when's your next court date uh it was in october 5th october 2022 but uh, they changed it to one september 1 2023 yeah so and then when did you file your i130 i130 i filed on march 18th 2022 last year and you filed that i130 by itself you didn't file for a green card i i filed my attorney he filed i30 and i485 Why? Why did he file the 485? Uh, no, he did not. Sorry, he did not file the I-485. He just submitted I-485 for only uh, the biometrics only for to the court. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, and the I-130 is still pending. I-130 is still pending from last 11 months, and I am uh, getting worried day by day because in my app it's showing uh, UCIS app it's showing. KC is being actively reviewed by UCIS. It's nothing is outstanding this time in Vermont. My uh, my attorney he already wrote the letter to Vermont Center, and I I, uh, I think you're just waiting. So I approach the Congress lady, and she also write the letter to Vermont. That's, that's worthless. I think you're just waiting, sir. Any idea that how long, how much long time I have to wait? I'd say probably a year and a half. Year and a half more. Yeah, dude, you're in the, no year and a half total. Year and a half total. Mm -hmm. So just, sir, for the, just for the I-130. So once my I-30 got approved, so let's sample suppose it's got approved in one month or two months. Mm -hmm. So how much time it will take to approve for I-485? Another year. So another year. So I I-485 it will be approved in UCIS or in the immigration court. What I would do is I would take the approved I one thirty, go to the judge, and say, "Hey, judge, let's terminate proceedings and let Shabazz and his spouse adjust in at USCIS." That's what I would do. Okay, okay. So it's slow, uh, it's slow dude. You gotta you gotta chill. You gotta you gotta chill. It's just this is a slow process. You're in deportation. Um, you can't expect things to go fast. They don't even go fast for people that aren't in deportation. So they're sure so, it's not going to go so, fast for you. Sir, sir, my mother passed away back home. So I'm sorry to I, hear that. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, they send me the death certificate. So I, I, if I will send... Nobody cares. Nobody, I care, but they don't care. You, that's not going to speed things up. Everybody's got a story. So, you're sir, in, you're, yeah. so sir, if, if for, for example, suppose... Uh, this uh, vermont center it's taking 16 months so what is the guarantee that after 16 months they did not approve or they they did not there's no guarantee there's no guarantee your case is going to take a long time because you're in removal oh so total you are saying it will be taking one and a half year for the i130 and when i have a court date in september 1 so the immigration mm -hmm. judge he the immigration role it they will they will they what they will do with that date no postpone it so on that date if my i30 got approved they can do that just it or just status on that date the judge isn't going to do that he's going to he or she's going to terminate your proceedings and send you to uscis oh, okay okay so he will not he will not make that adjustment status in the court very unlikely no if if my i30 got approved the immigration judge he can do that or no And, and an immigration judge can pull magic out of my ass. Just because they can do something doesn't mean they're going to do it for you. Oh, okay. You, okay. you have this. Uh, you have this idea that everyone's like working for you or wants to help you. You have no idea. You have no idea what you're talking about. You, they, they, they are not built to make life easy for Shabazz. They, they could care less about Shabazz. Shabazz is just another file, another case, and they, they, they are not kind. Oh you got so, you got to change your mindset your mindset is all off oh so sir the thing is uh, uh, if my attorney he wrote the letter to ucis they will not do anything and you know how many letters do you know how many letters uscis gets every day from somebody's lawyer saying hurry my case up do you know how many oh. they get every day they get probably a thousand of those do you know how many oh. congress letters they get every day probably 2000 oh my god my god sir thank you special sir thank you so much to open my eyes really i will change my mind now You have to say, you have to say, Alhamdulillah, 
Alhamdulillah, I am in the United States. I'm not getting sent back home to the country I feared. I'm here with my wife. I'm starting my life. I'm going to get my green but, card. Sir, I have a pet that nobody else has. I, 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 I have a baby from my previous marriage back home. How, I I mean, I, 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 these are all things that nobody cares about. None of these oh. things have anything to do with your immigration so, case. If I go back, I can't come back? Goodbye, in, Shabazz. Okay. In Shabazz, this situation, Shabazz has a million questions and isn't listening to jack shit that I said. We are done for today. We'll be back tomorrow at 4 p.m. for lots more fun on the Immigration Answer Show. See you tomorrow!